Hello and welcome to Red Live and I hope everybody who is watching this is having an awesome day. Me, I'm doing good man, no complaints whatsoever. Now I do have some red hot news for you today and our first topic of the video, Osquito's TikTok persona. Osquito's new TikTok persona seems to have shocked South Africans. Now the music boss has always been active on social media platforms but now he is wearing wigs, putting on makeup and acting like a woman. Now, as much as people are shocked, it does seem that a lot are loving it. Now let me play one of his latest TikTok videos real quick. Ma. And then? Ki chicken licking. Ki choga. Ki reki. Wana reka wen. Wana reka na. Watu reki wana reka. Wana. Ki zo wula kama. Look, personally, I see nothing wrong with this. You know, it's kind of going back and forth between, you know, the male persona and the female persona. I actually can't find it a little bit funny. I will say this. Sometimes when you don't have a female or woman around to do these kind of role-playing things with, you might as well do it yourself. This is what Osquito did. He was like, you know what? Just because I don't have bae or woman around in the house, it doesn't mean I can't TikTok as a couple or as a duo. It's over. Why? I get on pen out. Oh, Oski, Oski, get to four. Some more power to Oskido, in my personal opinion. But apart from what I think about this, Oskido is quoted as saying the following, I really enjoy making these videos, especially because I do them with my kids. I don't even think about it. The wigs and the lipsticks are about having fun. With TikTok, you have to create a character. Because my voiceover is a woman, I have to act like a woman. So yeah, there you have it. It's just some innocent fun that Oskido is having with his kids. He goes on to say, it's still early days for the character. We are still trying to develop her. A lot of people think the wig is from DJ Zintlo's hair brand, Her Majesty, but it's not. It's from Sis Judy. The character's name is coming soon. I have a creator director who's also a TikToker and a musician. His name is PD Jokes and will advise me on the direction to take with the character. So yeah, apart from him, really it does seem that he's taking this very seriously and enjoying the time with his kid. He's also kind of uh, gotten someone to direct him, a TikToker. Lastly, he goes on to say, as old people, we are always too serious and this platform allows us to be creative and open. We are creating memories. Which, to be honest with you, I do agree with what he's saying over there. He goes on to say, a little plug over there. He goes on to, you know, insert a little plug. He says, I have a new song. Keep a lookout on my TikTok for dance challenges. It's already trending on YouTube as well. So yeah, I mean, do get in the comment section down below. Are you going to be partaking in that particular challenge? And also do let me know what you guys think about Osquito's persona, female persona on TikTok. Our next topic, Kakiso Medupe reveals how he used his private part to become a millionaire. So actor and TV host Kakiso Medupe has opened up about how he became an instant millionaire. Now Kakiso has been in the entertainment industry for more than two decades and he definitely still has a lot to offer. He has successfully dabbled between acting, producing and TV hosting. Now the actor who is famous for playing the role of Manginyati on ETV Scandal recently sat down with King David where he said he used his private part to become a millionaire. Kakiso said the following, it's funny, I used my private parts to become a millionaire. Now when he was asked by the podcaster about how he used his manhood to become a millionaire, Mdupe did not shy away from spilling the tea. He goes on to say, I was like, okay, I am married and at the time it was for 12 years. I was not circumcised and I was like, what are the benefits of circumcision? Now he revealed that he approached brothers for life and right to care to collaborate with them so that they could start a campaign to encourage men to get circumcised. Nakahiso said that he asked men to join him on the day he went to circumcise and said that he wanted one rand from each circumcision. Now he goes on to say that his manhood lured about 1.1 million men across the country for the campaign. So if you do the maths, he made 1.1 million rands if you did get that one rand per. I suppose for every penis circumcised, it sounds like it was quite a campaign and uh, one that actually paid off for Kakiso so yeah so look fellas if you are not circumcised for whatever reason I mean you could pay me one rand and I'll accompany you to get circumcised and who knows I might become the next circumcision millionaire I was gonna ask you guys to comment down below if you are circumcised but I kind of feel like that is a wrong comment to put in the comment section so just never mind I'm gonna edit that part out 
Our next topic, Pretty Ugly, explains why he lost to Casper Nyovest. Look, this very short fight seems to be giving us content. You know, more and more things are coming out, whether it is a thank you, whether it is memes, whether it is a wife being trolled, whether it is Casper Nyovest running away from Big Zulu. But yeah, it does seem that the fight that lasted just one round, KO, keeps on giving content. Well, now it does seem that Pretty Ugly has done an actual video, a live video, where he explains what happened. And also talks about, you know what, it was all about promoting boxing at the end of the day and sometimes you gotta lose to win. So yeah, let's take a listen to Pretty Ugly making excuses, I mean Pretty Ugly's video, real quick. When our whole strategy in, in the first round was supposed to be like, to, you know, to move around, to tie him, to tie him out, to, uh, to jab, to defend, it's just like, <laughs> I just kept attacking, kept attacking, kept attacking. And every time I attacked, like uh, I left my defenses uh, exposed, and I got and I got hit in the head every single time, and and it happens, you know what I'm saying? Um, and for other people, it's gonna be absolutely hilarious. I saw like uh, some of the highlights myself, and they are hilarious. <laughs> and and it's, those are my L's to take, you know what I'm saying? And what it's gonna do is just like make. You know, my story have more character, bro. It's just like, you guys wait and see, like, when we, when we start winning, like, how much, like, these losses, you know, won't mean a thing, but how much the losses will contribute even more to the success story, you know? Um, because it would be boring, man, if, if you were just Superman all the time and you had no kryptonite. And, and like I said, the most disappointing thing for me that night was not the loss but more my performance man just like i performed way better in my training sessions and my rehearsal sessions and my sparring sessions and um, and then you yeah you get you, you just get on that stage and, and you you kind of freeze up you know as like maybe being a battle mc and like you know having all these verses that you have written and then you, you get you get to uh to performance night and you choke and it's like it happens, you know, it's one of those things that just actually, actually happen. Damn, I think I just missed the off ramp. Damn, I'm chatting too much. <laughs> yeah, but that's just to say, man, like, you know, um, you win some, you lose some. My, one of my coaches had said this to me and said, um, okay, it wasn't one of my coaches, one of the people at ESPN. And he said, only ballerinas will laugh at a fighter's loss meaning that like if you're a fighter you understand that like it's part of the game there's got to be a winner there's got to be a loser he took a horrible kick to the head and it's just like that's one of my favorite dudes and i even laughed at it i was like oh shit that's damn i didn't expect that you know so like i said the the most disappointing thing for me was not the loss was just like more the performance i don't think the performance was an accurate uh, representation of how much work and training really went into this fight it's like it, it looked like i didn't fight like train at all looking back when i when i was like doing you know but it's like those are all experiences that if you're open-minded you take and you learn from um you go back into the drawing board and you go back even harder you know so this is gonna make like my next fight like like so much sweeter bro you know i think a lot of people feel like oh dog he's done fighting now it's over and it's just like nah dog it's just um you know it was my first fight on a big platform in front of a lot of people and it's just like it's cool man i choked up um what's important is the bounce back from here and and something that i said earlier on that like when i was saying it i wasn't really thinking about it too much but it resonated with me like shortly after and i said um I said, if, if this fight for me was sincerely about the promotion of boxing, like I had been saying in the interviews about highlighting the sport of boxing and getting more people to watch the sport of boxing, and it's not about ego, it's not about, it's about not, it's nothing about that, you know? It's really about like highlighting the sport of boxing, showcasing the sport of boxing, getting more people to be watching the sport of boxing. You know, like in the 80s, 90s, boxing was the second most viewed uh, sports in our country, just after soccer. And now I've been attending boxing events and um, 
it's empty as shit. There's like nobody there. Uh, just a few people, you know? And and that's something I commend, you know, um, Vertex Events and cast a team of, you know, for doing is like really bringing like more attention to the sport of boxing because a lot of my homies are like boxers, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, there you have heard it from Pretty Ugly himself. I mean, dude should just rest. He lost. He lost in the first round. It was a horrible fight to watch, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not a professional boxer or someone who's actually used to watching boxing, but from what I saw in that very short fight, it looked like there was no game plan. But I do agree with what he's saying. Sometimes you got to take the L, move on, and go on to bigger wins. So yeah, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys think about Pretty Ugly's explanation as to how or why he lost to Casper Jovest. He was supposed to be moving around, making Casper tired. In the end, he ended up on his butt. And just like that, we have reached the end of the news. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please do me a huge favor. Share it with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Confuse the hell out of everybody. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Real Live if you haven't. And binge watch my previous videos.